Hello, my friend. This is Clyde. I want to love the right way. Two texts. The first one is 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 8, which says, Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. The second text is 1 John chapter 4 and verse 15. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. Ask yourself the question, what is love? We know the answer, or at least we think we know the answer. I tell my wife daily, I love you. What does she hear when I say that? I officiate at numerous funerals and in the tributes, I often hear people speaking of the deceased saying, I love you. Then there is your best friend who frequently says, I love you. What do you understand by that statement? I am not going to give a definition. Rather, I want us to make sense of two statements separately and together. The first statement from the first text says, love never fails. The second statement from the second text says, God is love. The first statement, love never fails, is in the middle of a powerful statement that narrates the importance and the essentials of love. I'm not going to say true love because the writer does not make any such qualification. He is simply talking about love. In fact, there is no version of love, but as you read, it is relational love. It is love that is expressed by one person to the other. Nothing is said about being married or being a blood relation. He keeps love on a universal and and an all-inclusive platform. So let us get back to understanding this first statement. If love does not fail, then when I say I love you to someone, to my wife or my aunt or my baby, I need to know that what I'm saying is that the love I have for you will not, cannot, shall not fail. Now, you and I know that relationships, especially marriage, have had days when persons would say, I love you to each other without any thought of failing or not failing. They often meant that they would stay in love forever which is why the vows end till death do us part. Well, that is the intention, but sadly, down the road, some people get divorced. So did love fail? The writer states emphatically that love never fails. So something went wrong with that love that led two people to get married and then eventually get a divorce. Well, let us bring the second statement into the picture. God is love. Now, what does that mean? I believe that the writer is saying that God is the definition of love, both in character and in action. When we say that God is love, we are introducing a divine definition into an earthly experience. If we remove the God person from the definition of love, then it is not love and should not be called love, but be called something else. Before you stone me, let me read the wider context from which that statement comes. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. We know and we rely on the love God has for us. That love is not only experienced on a daily basis by the wonderful things God does for us, but the biggest love act was when God sent his son to die for us humans so that our sins could be forgiven and we get to have a relationship with God. That is the love God has for us. So if we understand that love and embrace that love, and if we accept the definition that God is love, then we are saying that we have this inseparable and priceless relationship with God. And when I say I love you, I am introducing my definition to the person that God is love. When you receive my love, you receive God, for God is love. So now that I have confused you somewhat, let us solve the puzzle. God is real love, and when I practice love, I am practicing God. Jesus told his friends to love one another as much as he loved them. Love each other the God is love way. And guess what? That love never fails because God is love, and love never fails. So say that again, Clyde. (laughs) I will gladly say it again because I am jumping for joy at what I am seeing. When I say to you, I love you, I am using the God is love definition. 
If I use that definition, then I'm giving you a confidence that my love will not fail because God is love and God does not fail. (laughs) We see that all over the Bible that God, who is love, he does not fail. His love is perfect because he is perfect. What happens in our human relationship is not that the love fails because love never fails. It is the individual who has failed. Circumstances have led me to stop loving this person and so we get a divorce or we stop relating to each other or we try to hurt each other. It gets ugly, but that is not love. It is the person who said, I love you. That is why love never fails. The secret is in the fine print, my friend. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. I've messed you up, right? (laughs) Let us make a confession. I do not have the capacity to love the way God wants me to love because I am human and I likely will fail. So God, I am accepting you into my life and help me to live in love when you, God, live in me. With you in my life, my love for my wife, my friends will not fail. Amen. I would love to hear from you on this topic. Write me at friendofclyde at gmail.com.